Welcome to another episode of Unpacking with me, Matthew Rodson, the Pack Scout. Today we're talking um, about a more technical topic, um, that topic being a comparison of the different ways that we manufacture plastic film. Um, it might seem like they are all the same and interchangeable, but they are very definitely not. Um, there are a lot of very specific properties and characteristics that make choosing the right film incredibly important depending for example on what it is that you are trying to protect um, what or how you want to protect it and so on so if we start with a short overview different orientation um, the three main options being discussed here are blown film where the film is literally blown to create like a bubble uh, that's how they it's blown out and and and, and created into a, a flexible film a machine direction oriented one which means it is pulled stretched lengthwise which is in the direction that the machine is moving and then you have bi axially oriented polyethylene in this case, it can be linear low density or high density or any type of material, but the BO, the biaxial part of that, means it is pulled in the direction of the machine and it is also pulled transverse direction. So if you think about a compass, MDO is like a north south pull, but BO means that it is north south, east and west. So it is pulled along both axes, hence biaxially oriented. As you look down here, you can see that some of the different properties that are uh, wanted or needed amongst films. So different tensile strength, the Elmendorf tear is that when you pull the, uh, when you basically create a tear and pull it, does it pull and break evenly? Does it kind of zigzag? Is it impossible to pull open with your bare hands? These are all the things that help you figure out what you're going to use to open a bag of chips or to tear off the top of a uh, candy bar, for example. Why is there or has there historically been uh, maybe less uh, oriented polyethylene films in the past? Um, so initially, uh, they've got discussions here about there was improvements needed and in investigations on what each type of film actually did, why it worked better, why it had a particular purpose to film. And then what has changed? So there's a lot more equipment innovation, there's a lot more material innovation, there's a lot more resin innovation. So both what goes into the process, how it follows through the process, um, and then uh, what equipment um, uh, has been made or is being made and what that equipment impact is. All of that is impact impacting the use of these films in the market. For the machine process, if you can see here, it's like a basically a massive tower and a kind of a conveyor belt. So it goes all the way up, drops down, and then it uses rollers to pull it through the machine. So if you see here, it's heated to a temperature. It's drawn using the rollers, uh, usually 20 to 25 micron. Uh, common stretch ratio is four to seven to one. Layers, mostly you're going to have five to seven, up to seven layers. And then the uh, commercial scale lines run between about 700 to 2,000 pounds an hour. That's how much they're, they're creating. In bi actually, uh, if you look down here, you're looking at the machine from above. So rather than having that kind of tower set up where it kind of heats draws and is pulled here you'll see that it is basically heated up the uh, frames uh, pull and pull uh, along both axes and uh, as it flows down the line it will get pulled in both directions so that it maintains a uniform thickness throughout types of designs You've got a, for example, a machine direction oriented high density film. You could have a transparent biaxially oriented polyethylene high density film. You'd have a high puncture resistant uh, machine direction orientated 
linear low density film. And that means that it's got a much uh, thicker film. So it's much harder for something to pierce that film. So if you're using something that you want to try and create that puncture resistance, for example, something that is heavy, might be agricultural, or it might have uh, products inside that are tougher or harder. And so if it's being dropped, for example, if you take something like um, uh, bones for uh, dogs, for dog food, um, they might be in a 20 or 30 or even 50 pound bag. That bag to get transported is being dropped onto a truck and then dragged along the floor of a warehouse and then put onto another truck or dropped into a conveyor belt. It's got a lot of knocking around that takes place when that bag is being moved. And so you really want a high puncture resistance because it means that the product is able to survive the journey to actually get to you or I as the consumer. And then sealable films. So uh, again, in this case, you want it to basically seal evenly so that there's no uh, opportunity for air or anything to escape out the back of it. What we're looking at here is a uh, set of the key properties. Now it's gonna be very small and hard to read because ultimately there's a lot of different materials that are being uh, provided here. So you're looking at biaxially oriented polypropylene or polyethylene or polyester or polyalamide. Um, so the different types here, what we're looking at is where the numbers are significantly different. So for example, for puncture resistance, breaking work point, uh, it's very, very low for the biaxially oriented polyethylene at 0.032. Uh, it's much higher uh, when you get to something like polyalamide at 0.1, um, or e even if you look at the biaxially oriented options, they are all probably twice the one. So you know you've got sort of a 0.6, you've got a 0.7. If you look at things like the um, water vapor or the oxygen transfer rate, so do they keep oxygen in or out? Do they keep moisture vapor in or out? That's all this table is showing us. So machine directed direction oriented polyethylene and bi axially oriented low, low, low linear low density polyethylene are the main competitors to bi axially oriented high density polyethylene. So there's a technical advantage for the BOHDPE. It's got an increased modulus, it's got increased stiffness, it's got increased puncture resistance, improved machine direction dimensional stability, and then technical advantage to uh, offer other PE offerings such as it's got better strength, puncture, stiffness, barrier, heat resistance, etc. So that's a very brief rundown of some of the technical aspects of film packaging um, for a very brief reason as to why this matters. Um, if you think about the flexible packaging, or in fact, the packaging market overall, there's about four and a half trillion packaging units that make up the yearly packaging uh, requirements of the industry. So 2023, say 4.2 billion uh, individual units. And if there's 4.2 billion units, roughly one third, um, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower, but basically 33% are in flexible packaging. That is majority using film or paper or plastic or metal to create that flexible bag or pouch or sack or film that is then used to wrap the bag or produce or various other products. So if one third of that 4.2 trillion has to be packaged using one of these types of technologies, the decider is always going to be what is going to keep the product freshest, longest, and in the best condition to get it to us. And then how we're going to make sure that we make that in the most sustainable or resource efficient way so that it causes the least mess, uses the least materials to get made in the first place, um, and that we're able to give consumers something that is easy to dispose of, recycle, and reuse again. So that's been unpackaging and uh, unpacking 
uh, technical film comparisons today. And I'm looking forward to uh, the next one that I will be uh, hopefully able to share with you in the not too distant future.